everybody. So welcome to the last day of my ISPO streams. Um, I switched, skipped yesterday because I had a few other things to do and I just couldn't make it in time. Uh, getting those uh, fancy new dinner star tour skis that I showed you for testing, fitted with a nice set of plum bindings. They're also going to use a set of Pomoka 3.2.0 skins. They are the ones that are actually the ones with most grip from Pomoka, they weigh around 1.1 kilograms, which is relatively light. Um, so today we are going to talk a few about a few more other things that I found interesting while searching and scouring for the ISPO stuff. First we're going to start with a few polls. Uh, I have to show you a few new things from Leki that are coming for season 21-22. Uh, then from polls we're going to move to a few interesting things I found. Then we're going to talk about a material I'm very fond of from Gore that I've been using for a year. And uh, we're going to finish off with some safety equipment. And we're going to go through a few backpack innovations and I'm also going to show you this E1 electronic outright based backpack from Farino that I've been using as an integrated uh, uh, air safe mechanism, so the breathing tube for under avalanches. So not to be too long, let's just kick it off quickly with, let's start with the poles. So. You guys know we need different poles for different kind of applications in the mountains. Um, I use Lakey poles. Yeah, I know. I have all these Lakey stuff. So Lakey is also one, one of my sponsors and they have a ton of different products that I use. Mostly I use touring poles which have different features than normal poles. You know, you have poles for skiing, you have poles for racing. There is a wide variety of products on the market from Lakey, Black Diamond, which are some of the more noticeable Comprendle is also a brand that you will probably know. So all these uh, poles have different features and when you go touring in the backcountry an important feature for every pole to have is of course that it is height adjustable. There are different mechanisms to achieve this so you can get it, these ones for example all the way up to 140 if you're really tall. I use 125 when I'm hiking up, 120 when I'm riding down. Also an important thing for me when we're doing more ski mountaineering kind of stuff and you have to climb, use uh, ice access or crampons and other things. It's good if you can pack your poles into a small format that you can put on the side of your backpack or basically just store them inside your backpack or on the side so that they're not scouring around with when they're long. Is that they can be neatly packed up and quickly put together again while still staying height adjustable, like these. Microvario model is a maturing model. Also a good thing to have is that the bottom cup can open and close mechanical systems for height adjustments like these on the bindings here easily and quickly. So these are the basics. Then certain poles have more advanced mechanisms. You all know that we don't usually use uh, the hand uh, hooks so that you don't need them poles when you ride in the back country in case of an avalanche. If an avalanche catches you then your poles could act as a anchor and suck you in. That's why we usually don't use them. Now Leki has a system which is called the Trigger S system. It's been on the market for a while now. It's basically a safety mechanism that integrates part of the, of, uh, the part of the leash on the pole into the into the into either your glove or on an external adapter for your glove. Adapter is a harsh word, more more like a little harness thing. So basically, you can lock your poles kind of like you used to with the old normal poles into it. Click and you have the safety of not using the pole and when you fall or slide it just opens up and lets you go. So this is a quick overview. Now for the poles I use up until now I use the microvario poles as I said before for, for, for schema mountaineering and touring where it needs to be compactor and I use the Vicky Aegon tools for more normal touring, like very abuse resistant or there's also a budget version of this on the market, it's called the Hotterhut 
and they all have these ergonomic grips which are really fun when you're walking up and you need to like have hand hold. Now I've been trusting these for forever and they work really well. So, but since innovation doesn't stop, also like every other company at ISPO, Leki this year is also presenting a few new things. Maybe not, I don't think they're, they were in the ISPO stand or not, but regardless, the products for next year on the market is a complete extension of the free ride range with two new poles. One of them is this one. This is the Patrol S. You can see it has this sleek design. The top has been reworked, so this is the new Trigger S system. Uh, it's better, has a better release, it's more from, borrowed a little more from racing. The material for the grip has been changed, it's a little more grippy and the ergonomics are a little different. So I'll be testing these in the coming season. They come in this really cool spacey design, which is really neat. And you think you're going to be able to get them starting winter 2021. Now, since uh, innovation doesn't stop, uh, Lilki also introduced, I think it was last year, uh, they introduced an extension or an upgrade to the Trigger S system I've showed you before. It's called uh, the Trigger 3D. Now, this system is a little different from the other one. Uh, and, wait, and it kind of works like this. See? So, you have the grip thing, the trigger. adapter which locks you can see it nicely locks in click and you're set right locked in you're locked in and it's working right so when you're locked in and you fall this thing has another function you can see the part here you have to go it's focusing issue can now move to the side so it gets a side release. So if your hand gets bent to the side like this, the trigger releases to the side and lets you go. So basically it's just additional safety for, for the scenarios where it's kind of think of it as a um, alpine binding that does release on irregular angles, but for poles. So a really cool innovation here. And also in the free ride range next year, a new model is coming, which is called the Spitfire 3D. This one has exactly, is very comparable to, to the patrol with the difference that of course it's more directly free ride oriented, so it's not so much uphill oriented. It's a charger pole, you'd say. It has a really nice grip and it has the new Trigger 3D system. So that's, uh, of course all these poles come with, uh, with big and nice and fat uh, uh, caps. Uh, you can get these caps or you can also get the uh, old school touring oriented caps. Basically, if you use bindings like Guardian or Duke or something with the stronger plastic, these are better for pin bindings. I don't even notice the difference, so I keep these. And yeah, they're going to be on the market next year. Um, I don't exactly know what the price range is, but I think there'll be somewhere around, uh, probably from starting from a hundred bucks, I think. Uh, around 120, 150, something like that. So, so much for these. Now we're going to switch over to a few fun things uh, that I noticed at ISPO. And after that, we're gonna go to, to the Avalanche backpacks. Okay, so. Okay, boys and girls. We're back at gaming setup, as I like to call it. Oh yeah, I just wanted to show you is the, this is like the logo for the Trigger 3D thing, if you ever see it in a store from Leki. Also, one more thing I was really interested in is that they are going to bring gl really cool glove designs for the free ride into the market. Wait, where are they? Uh-huh, I think they're here. It was like, they are really inspired by like a series of old gloves that Leki made in the old days right god there's so much stuff here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. i think we're coming closer to what we were looking for yeah look at these aren't they awesome i really dig this design so this is for that now at 
It's well, as usual, just over the basics. Today, again, you have the public live stream. It's the last one. You can watch it on the main site. There's also a lot of interesting content and articles from Kilian Journet to running to certain marketing aspects of the coronavirus pandemic and all this stuff. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, go check it out on the ISPO webpage. It's for free. And for us, let's move to the products. And I said it. I'm very, very, very also, yeah, I found these, uh, some Chinese pole maker, which looks like a really like a leaky knockoff. I mean, sometimes what you find in the vendor uh, vendor places uh, from the Chinese sub subcontractors really is funny because carbon copies. <laughs> Not, but not quite the carbon copy, because if you look at the picture, you already see if you know what the differences are between these fields, that there is going to be a few issues with this system. But hey, maybe two generations behind, but let's leave that be. So, I said that I'm also interested in a material from Gore that I've been using for a while. It's called Gore-Tex Infinium. It's a high-performance, non-waterproof material. Basically, uh, I actually, last year, more to 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 um, basically my eagerness to have like really cool stuff i found these gloves i think the model was called universe i don't know if they're gonna make them next season or not like it has this really cool design with the mountains and they're made from a special material which is called gore-tex infinium you can see it here on the side now the infinium material is a completely new fabric uh, that gore has been developing uh, it's designed for drier conditions and that don't need waterproofing, right? So we figure, okay, it doesn't have waterproofing. What the hell are you going to do with these, uh, uh, with your skiing thing? Well, I found these things with the Gore-Tex Infinium material. And I don't think they're the only gloves with Gore-Tex Infinium material. Also, the designs are cool. And the other design is even cooler, like the one with the, you know, I have a fetish for cable cars. This one has cable cars on it. <laughs> so if you can, wait, can you see it? Uh, yeah, now you should see it. See, ooh, little gondolas from Austria. We all have little gondolas from Austria. So this material, I really love uh, taking up when I'm going up on the mountain. Like if it's somewhat humid, it's not super cold, but it's not warm that you wouldn't be wearing any gloves. Uh, you put them on, they are very breathable and they don't uh, have any issues when it comes to humidity because they dissipate humidity really quickly. Uh, so your hand doesn't get cold, you can still move, in moderate wind it's no problem, like if it gets really windy you have to change them, but I found the material to be extremely cool also because it uh, dries extremely fast. So if you go up and you sweat a lot and the gloves get all this sweaty, you put them into the backpack and 10 minutes later they're good to go again. Also the grip is really good, <laughs> funnily I use them with my uh, ice picks a lot. Uh, where you would think that you would need sturdier gloves and the material had with, has withstood the abuse quite okay. Mm, well, the thing for the um, finger for the mobile phone material got off, but the rest is pretty much intact. So get it if you can, try it out. Gore-Tex Infinium should be a really cool, cool material. I would love to see more uh, middle layers and stuff like that on it. Maybe a t-shirt to put over if you're going touring and you sweat a lot and maybe for spring when it's like gets warmer and of course you need more dissipation of heat now the next thing i was also interested in was old school goggles you know we love these and i saw these alpinas and i was thinking like damn <laughs> damn this looks 80s wouldn't you love to have these swing <laughs> <laughs> the 80s are still here and I think we're going back to the 80s because a lot of brands including Leki are doing the retro thing now which is kind of cool because you have like all these designs that look so much better than the stuff we buy these days only they're infused with today's technology I think that is an awesome thing okay next thing I wanted to talk about is another beacon uh, as you know the other day I showed you the peeps uh, micro button LT the Black Diamond Recon Light uh, and the Ortovox uh, diary vo diary Direct Voice or Direct Voice or Dear Voice or whatever. Uh, the one that has the beep beep and talk thing. Well, apparently the trend these days with the beacons is to go micro, small, so that is the Verivox S size. Uh, 
What I found interesting is that it claims to be a digital analog combo device that has a range, strip range of about 70 meters. So this would outperform the actual performance of my old uh, Ortovox patroller that has 60 meters. Whether this is real or not remains to be seen. I haven't tested the beacon. Usually when we do uh, the marketing presentations and uh, educational camps with peeps, uh, we test a variety of beacons for their performance and it differs greatly from their uh, their claimed ranges. It also has some kind of smart function uh, that allows uh, rescue send, a function to protect uh, non-searching rescuers. So if people are working and uh, searching for people and you get buried by a second avalanche, apparently this thing can automatically switch to send. Now I don't know how this system works. It might be based on a gyro or some computer algorithm that would uh, directly know or I don't know, but if it works, I think it is a cool innovation, maybe a really cool feature. Um, so that's for the beacon thing. Now the other thing I was also interested in was, you know, when I go uh, bivouacking and take my trusty house with me. Yes, this is the whole thing. This is this is my tent, the Ferino Pilar 2 tent, uh, two kilos. You strap it on the back of your big backpack at the bottom and just take it with you. <laughs> it weighs uh, around as much as my sleeping bags <laughs> and it can seat three people. So it's a really cool tool. And once you have a base camp set up with these kind of tents or other things, uh, you also need power for all your cameras, for all your gadgets, your gears, your phone. And this is when I found this Ningo Pio Outdoor Technology Corporation Limited. Of course, a Chinese company with energy backup, lithium power, battery, solar generators. Now, you just buy to, need to buy the solar panels. But what I found amazing with this thing is that it has 220 kilowatt hour batteries, which means 60,000 amp milliampere hours. Ooh, and it only weighs 2.3 kilos. So it's kind of like a goal zero device, but probably a lot cheaper. I mean, the quantities that they list here are insane. 1,590 pieces. So if anybody wants to buy a few, let me know. Give me a PM. Uh, which means that I'm actually looking for this kind of stuff for the next bivouacking thing we are doing. Moving on from this, I also went into the uh, scouring... Uh, um, scouring the the ISPO for innovations and one that I found interesting was uh, a product from a German company called Auftrieb which is called a Krampau. So a Krampau is basically a powder crampon. So with your fancy powder skis when you need to cramp somewhere up you have this thing into your, in your backpack and you just strap it to your skis and walk up. Interesting concept. <laughs> Uh, powder escalator should be like really easy to hike up some icy ridge but whether this is a tool that I would buy or not remains to be seen I mean you would have to test it it's probably for a use scenario but I don't know what what uh, uh, what kind of more plus you'd have in comparison to a normal crampon sure you could walk on snow probably because it has a lot more uh, more uh, fläche, uh, like space over but yeah, this is an interesting innovation that I found among many because there are a few really interesting ideas at ISPO that nobody figured, thought of. I really like the ideas where it's not a knockoff of something or an improvement of something that's already been done a million times. So this one is one of these. And I'm really, really congratulations for the guys to thinking this kind of stuff up. So I also went uh, checked out a few more things regarding... Uh, regarding uh, Climbing equipment, uh, I use a few Elderid, especially carabiners. Uh, not like this one, but apparently this is a new, cool new carabiner, probably relatively light from what I can see. It has all the certifications. I like also like their lime color, so which is really cool. But another thing I noticed with uh, Elderid is uh, that they are... Uh, the, wait, the, what is this? Jewel 2? No. Ah, okay, this is a belay device. Uh, more of a classic belay guy to be completely honest and I also thought that I had there was oh no it's gone interesting well a harness from Elderid I noticed that they have climb green so probably made out of reusable materials uh, to a certain extent uh, also with same goes with the ropes Neo R3 perfect rope like 9.8 
for your average climbing or multi pitching. And yeah, now before we uh, finish for today, one more thing that I also noticed was I've scoured through the backpacks. Now, I noticed uh, that uh, Halley Hansen, I think, had an adapter that was for a uh, avalanche backpack from an upright system that uh, was made completely out of reusable materials, the backpack. So it was more of a backpack, not a safety device. Uh, comp another company I always keep an eye on and I used to use for years and years was uh, ABS. ABS, uh, you know, a few years ago, uh, old people retired, sold the company to new management and since then ABS has been rebranding itself, uh, expanding into different markets and also redoing the products. And uh, the a Light is uh, the most versatile backpack they claim, uh, also the most versatile probably from their range. Uh, it's the new uh, Alpright system. I few years back, if you're going to go check my blog, I had the opportunity also in cooperation with ISPO's uh, innovation platform to test the, the precursor of this airbag uh, uh, for a season. It was their first hybrid electronic device. So uh, it was the first, uh, you can find all the infos and the reviews, I think on one of the ISPO pages where we did that or uh, just go check my blog and you will find a review there too. Now the new system is kind of like a mesh system so you have this uh, back harness with the airbag integrated where you put the whole airbag thing you need on. So uh, they keep their mo modularity with the, the somewhat modularity with their zip-on system. Uh, you can get a different kind of system. Now they also started a production of an adventurous airbag system which includes a climbing harness which is called the Escape Plus. Escape, get it? We escape into the special zones, the plus. So this will be an interesting product to check out. Uh, looks more like a conventional old Vario unit, basically, if you ask me. Uh, has a zip-on, probably can be used with different zip-on lengths. I have a variety of wait, adapters for the old system still here, which were really good from different companies. Let me get it Like I used to be a especially big fan of uh, of the Evoque adapters. This is the big 60 liter pack. Now you can see it, like the big 60 liter pack with the super cool harness at the top. I really love this one. This is probably one of the best uh, ergonomically designed packs I ever used for for really big packs. Like really good, really good. No, but now since I don't use that system anymore, I have it around. If I ever decide to reuse the old system for whatever reason or some friend wants to go with us and we borrow in the system and we want to use him as a mule. <laughs> yeah, I know that's a little evil. Okay, so uh, with the escape system, I haven't gotten any more information on that because I didn't write to any, or any of them, but I presume it's more of a touring oriented backpack system. You can see that it's also a little back heavy. I don't like it when they extend outside that much. That's what I love about my new pack uh, because with this huge pack, the extension was quite considerable. So you had to lean forward a lot and carrying for long distances was a bit of a problem. It wasn't super convenient. Now, another system I saw was Mammut's system, the light short removable airbag system. That's the 3.0 version. It's in the 3.0 version now. Now, I saw this one at uh, last ISPO, uh, not the one, but when they were prototyping it a while back. Uh, and uh, it looked like a very compact system that you could easily remove because, uh, I mean, even in my system you can also remove it, but this one is easier to remove. Now, I haven't seen the pack itself or how much space it eats up in the backpack, but it uh, looks like another, another system, uh, airbag system that is relatively light, should be modular and easily removable. So if you're interested in this one, go check out Mammut's page. They will have more information on this probably shortly, like not now because it's ISPO, but probably by the beginning or middle of summer. Okay, so 
this is all the stuff that I wanted to look at today in regards to the ISPA. And one more thing I would like to go over is another, since we were finishing with airbag systems, is uh, to show you another airbag I use. I've been using uh, basically testing before and using for a while now. Uh, it is based on the Albright system and more on that on the other camera. Okay, so as you know, airbag systems are very different these days than they used to be probably like even five years ago. Uh, we all used to buy ABS Vario systems and run them into the ground with all the modular backpacks like this one. Like all the modules for different use scenarios, like the EVOC here, which is uh, 45 liters plus five, 40 plus 5 liters. You always had to zip it on, it was hanging on you for uh, considerably wider. Now, with the advent of the electronic airbag systems like the Jeep Black Diamond Jet Force and based on lithium ion technology, and especially uh, the Alpright D1 system, which was premiered by Scott and by Perino. This is one of these products. This is the uh, E1 based, Alfred E1 based. Just, uh, the E1 based system is my favorite system. Currently, I use it. I've been using this one for a year. This is the Perino version, the full safe 30 backpack. Um, it's uh, made for mountain rescue in mind again because Perino usually has that. It's made from really tough Cordura materials, has all the necessary climbing gear. It's non-obstructive, it has a special pack for, for your tools, ice axis, crampons, and so on, and your main compartment, which like really nice, big handles, which you can open with your gloves and close them too. Uh, it's also made of uh, Riptop 50 material, which is very durable. You can have it as a side carry, and it also integrates, has a very cool, back feature which nicely integrates into the system. Now what this backpack differs from other backpacks is that it also has an integrated air safe system. Look, I am your father. No, I'm not Luke's father, but hey. Star Wars puns unintended. Uh, this has an integrated breathing system next to, of course, the normal airbag system. You can take both of these systems out and just use the backpack. It has a really nice carry thing. It is made more, it's made like an alpine pack. So wait, step a little back so you can see it. So it nice up, runs nicely down your spine and is very, 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 very fine because you can move all around with your hand. Yeah, I should do a little bit of mm, mm, whatever. So, with the airbag system, I would probably like to finish today's ISPO stream. This is the last ISPO stream. I hope you guys liked uh, what I showed you. Maybe you found a few products that were interesting for you. Maybe you got a few ideas for products that you might make one day. And hopefully, it helps you deciding what you're going to get. And what would be interesting to have, to see, or maybe you've learned one thing or two. Now, uh, remember to subscribe if you like it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write me a PM on Instagram or on, on my Discord or maybe on uh, my blog. Go check it out, awayfromthepack.com. I have new content up from time to time when I have time to actually write articles. Uh, recently, I've been posting more stuff on Instagram stories, so go check those out or fun adventures with my friends at home doing some skiing stuff during Corona times. Also, I wrote a nice article about that, so go check it out. And uh, hopefully you like the ISPO coverage, give me a feedback, some feedback on that. And uh, well, then we'll see you probably for ISPO next year. Maybe with this, I would finish with a short summary of what I thought about ISPO. You know, it was a weird year. Uh, we had to uh, not go to Munich and have fun with our friends or meet people who develop the product we use and test these days, like these super cool poles and stuff like that. Ooh.
but we couldn't talk to them this year. I mean, we exchanged a few emails. It wasn't the same. Now, as for the online ISPO, I don't know, guys. Maybe give us some, give me some feedback of what you think of the online format of these uh, kind of fairs, where you have like stuff online with pictures and just contacts, maybe video calls, Zoom calls, and all these kind of stuff. Uh, what do you think? I still think personally that a fair like the ISPO should be held personally. Um, touching the products and seeing them is different from watching it marketing material pictures. Now. Uh, that is also why I uh, decided to not write articles this year, but to try to do streams and maybe give you a bit of a feeling of how it is if this thing were like, hi, yeah, you take it. What do you think? Do you like the feel of the plastic and stuff like that? So I hope uh, it helped to convey a little bit of that and uh, also um, helped you maybe choose a few, learn something about new materials like this ones or or, or, or the backpacks, or the peepses, or the skis. I mean, uh, there's so much stuff to cover in skiing, we can't cover it all, and we won't cover it all today. But still, I hope you learned something, you saw some interesting products, and uh, uh, maybe I'll see you again next year. And But I'll definitely see you guys in the snow. And remember, if you go outside this weekend, uh, there's going to be a Suchtal, a Suchtal, and it's going to be stormy. Temperatures outside are 15 degrees, so situation with Sunday is going to go in Slovenia around uh, snowfall in the Julian Alps at altitudes starting first at 15 to 1800 and then going down on Monday, uh, which means that it's going to rain a lot as well. So be, be please be careful if you go outside, take your avalanche equipment, maybe use tomorrow or Sunday if there is no powder to maybe do a quick avalanche check course with your friends and have a fun extended weekend and for my austrian friends have a great holiday i mean it's corona but you can still go skiing to zalfensee <laughs> so yeah um have a good one and uh, see you next time then